Welcome back to Cy Rusher's inaugural podcast. This is called Amazing Stories, where we sit down with people from the community and talk about their experience with the Cy Rusher bike. So today we have got Mark over here with us, and Mark is going to tell us about his experience and how he utilized his Cy Rusher e-bike in his weight loss journey. And so I'll turn it over to you, Mark, and if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself a little bit um, and let the community know who you are, you know what you're about, and that'd be uh, that'd be awesome. Okay. No. Uh, my name's Mark, um, and I'm. You know, my background is uh, IT. I've been in uh, information technology and cybersecurity for about 35 years. Um, unfortunately, it is a very sedentary job sometimes, and uh, over the course of the last 15 years, that led to some weight issues. Um, at my peak, I was 430 pounds. Um, 15 years ago, I was 220 pounds. So it kind of shows you in the last 15 years sitting on my butt all day. This is, this is where it got me. Um, I decided, um, uh, not by choice really, uh, a little over 18 months ago that I needed to lose the weight. I ended up having a blood clot in my leg, uh, ended up having uh, ultrasonic surgery to have it removed. And I was told by the doctor, if I didn't do something about my weight, there's a good chance I'd have a heart attack or stroke in the next couple of years. Um, I found out, uh, after going through the blood clot that I did have some medical issues that were a result of the weight gain. Uh, my thyroid was non-functional. Uh, I had no T3 and T4 in my blood or very little. Uh, so they did put me on Synthroid, which is a synthetic thyroid medication, which kind of jump-started my weight loss. Um, two months after I was on the, the Synthroid, I had already lost 30 pounds. Um, I decided to go to a weight loss clinic talk to a dietitian and a food psychologist to kind of figure out what was happening and why I was gaining the weight. Um, I never didn't have a really bad diet. I didn't, didn't eat fast food. I didn't eat fried food, but what I did do was I ate once a day, uh, usually a large three, 4,000 calorie meal at night, right before I went to bed, didn't eat breakfast, didn't eat lunch, worked all day, 10, 12 hours a day, got home, ate a big meal, went to bed. Mm. Uh, most of my meals were fish, chicken, and, and vegetables. So it wasn't unhealthy food, but it was the amount of food I was eating. So I got that under control. Um, I, you know, now my diet consists of eating six to eight ounces of food every two to three hours, as opposed to, uh, pounds of food one time a day. Um, still eating essentially the same thing though. I've switched, uh, from the generic or the over the counter commercial brand foods to plant-based foods. Um, so even like your, your, your generic, uh, potato chips or corn chips, uh, Dorito ruffles, that kind of stuff. I've gotten away from that kind of junk and gone to similar foods that are plant-based taste the same cost a little more, but instead of 40 grams of carbs and no protein, they are 25, 30 grams of protein and almost no carbs. Mm. So it makes a big difference. Um, but the mental part of it is, was getting away from the eating a big meal once a day, um, and drinking coffee as my primary dietary staple the rest <laughs> of the day. Um, I actually haven't had coffee in almost 20 months now. Uh, wow. no caffeine at all. Um, no sodas. Uh, I've never been a soda guy. It's probably been 10 years since I've had a soda, but no ice, no black teas. Um, everything I drink now is, is uh, green tea or, water or, um, some sort of protein or, uh, brain branch chain amino acid milkshake, um, to, to just kind of keep my body metabolism moving consistently throughout the day. Um, and then in the, in the process of all this, I decided to go for gastric sleeve surgery, which is where they remove a percentage of your stomach, which also helps, uh, you not eat as much, obviously, because your stomach is smaller. Um, so, when I had the gastric surgery, when I, when I went in for the gastric sleeve surgery, they told me I had to lose at least 30 pounds before they would even consider the surgery. Mm -hmm. By the time I actually had the surgery, I'd lost almost 80 pounds. So, um, just getting my diet fixed, getting my, my thyroid fixed started the weight loss. But I was told by several doctors that it really didn't matter how much weight I lost. I would always put it back on because I would always have the desire to eat a lot. Um, it's just because of how big my stomach was, how big I was, um, there was, there was things that had to be done in order to prevent me from eating a lot of food at one time. And the gastric sleeve surgery seemed like the way to go. I uh, don't regret it. It's been a year, just over a year it was August 21st of last year when I had it done. Um, 
the other part of the problem that I had, again, sedentary job, um, I didn't have time to exercise and I needed to figure out how to make the time. So that's where the bike, the bike came in. I said, you know what? I commute to work 25 miles. It takes me an hour to an hour and a half in a car to get to work, to go 25 miles. Kind of ridiculous going through downtown LA and, and taking an hour and a half to go 25 miles. I mean, it literally means you're driving about 14 miles an hour. And I, well, I can get a bike and I could ride 14 miles an hour and still make it to work at the same amount of time. <laughs> um, when I started looking at bikes, I wasn't actually looking at e-bikes. Um, what took me to the e-bikes was, was the weight capacity. Because of how heavy I was, it was 365 pounds when I started looking. Uh, most bikes have a max weight capacity of about 250 pounds, which means that I would have had to lose another 115 pounds before I could even consider getting on a bike, which was a very daunting task. And I kind of wanted to, to start doing something exercise wise. So Google searches led me to, okay, e-bikes. Um, what led me to Cy Rusher was the fact that they had inventory. Um, at, in the middle of COVID last year, there were a lot of um, companies that had no inventory. Mm -hmm. And Cy Rusher, even though they had a six week lead out uh, before I got it, that was right in line with my recovery. It was going to take six to seven weeks to get recovery after the surgery before they were going to, the doctors were going to release me to do any kind of physical exercise. So it just worked out hand in hand. Um, and so I went with, I had a budget. I went with what I could afford in that budget, got the bike and, um, if you know, the amplifying, uh, my pedal, uh, got me to work faster than a regular acoustic bike. And that's what I was looking for. No, I didn't want to honestly be pedaling a bike for two hours to and from work every day. That's four hours in commuting on a bike that I, which I probably could do, but I didn't want to spend that much time commuting. Um, so that's where, you know, I said, okay, the e-bike looks like an option. A uh, few people I talked to, they, they really, like, what's the point? And you, you wouldn't got to get any exercise. And I, well, you still have to pedal. You know, you, I'm not going to throttle 25 miles to work. I mean, I can ride my motorcycle if I want to do that. <laughs> um, so that's where it's, I mean, really where it started. I got the bike, uh, learned a lot about bikes. I didn't know anything about them. I hadn't ridden a bike since I was 15 years old uh, and I'm 50 now. So 35 years and I had to learn, but I learned about what I needed, what I wanted the bike to do for me. So I ch started changing some parts to the bike perform to what I wanted it to do. Uh, the very first day I rode, um, took me a little over an hour and a half, uh, ran out of battery four miles before I got to the office. Uh, so I had to pedal that bike the last four miles, uh, by myself. And I was dead when I got to work, but <laughs> it was, a, it was amazing to me that, um, everybody knew I was coming in on the bike that day. Cause I had told, told the people in my department that I was going to try biking to work, uh, uh they were they were all standing out in front of the building waiting for me to show up and i got applause from everybody i worked <laughs> with 30 people were standing out there and cheering me on because i managed to do that 25 miles uh and they all knew what i was struggling with with my weight so and the company has been great i mean they, they my employer has been behind me 100 percent um they have supported me people have complimented me they constantly are coming up to me and telling me how good I look since, as I'm losing the weight over the last year. Um, always commenting, always asking about what I'm doing, what I'm eating. Uh, when they order food for the, you know, for parties and stuff here, they always make sure that they order something I can eat. Um, so there's always something in the vegetarian world or in a low carb world that I can eat. And I've had three other people now follow suit with me. They've, they've started the process and, and are working to lose the weight themselves. So kind of started a fad here at work. So we'll see how far it goes. Um, and then I just started doing it. I just said, you know what, I have, I have to do it. I realized within the first couple of days, it was taking me the same amount of time to get to work on a bike that was taking me to get to, to get to work in a car. I wasn't losing any time. As a matter of fact, I've actually now get to work a lot faster than I do in my car. Um, mm -hmm. because I, I've, I've found routes, um, riverbeds and, and bike routes that I don't have to deal with traffic. I don't have to deal with stoplights. I don't have to deal with, with turns and stuff. I just get on and go and I can pedal at 25, 30 miles an hour on the bike and get to work. Now my fastest time is 42 minutes to go 25 miles. My wow. slowest time, my slowest time is 72 minutes. So, I mean, I, I move when I'm coming and, um, I get out in the middle of traffic and make my left turns, right turns, and I keep pace with the 35, 40 mile an hour traffic that's going up the, the streets around here. Um, 
been pulled over three times by police <laughs> um, for either uh, driving too fast. I was driving um, uh, 30 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone. <laughs> um, then I also got pulled over for not having turn signals on my bike. So now I have turn signals on my bike um, because of how fast I was moving. Mm. But yeah, it's, I get to work now and I feel, you know, I feel great. I've almost 13,000 miles on a bicycle in 11 months. So I have not even put 3,000 miles on my car. <laughs> See, in the same amount of time. In the same amount of time. Yeah. yeah. My car is, just sits in my driveway. As a matter of fact, I, I have my wife drive it once in a while because I don't start it very often. <laughs> I think it went for three weeks. And I hadn't even started it. I hadn't even driven it. So That is funny. And which, which model did you end up going with when, uh, when you bought the bike? I have the XF800. Okay. Uh, and the reason I got that one is because it has full suspension. And I didn't know with my size how harsh that ride was going to be on my my posterior. So I wanted something with some suspension. Um, I ended up having to change the suspension to an air shock, you know, to, in order to have a, a little bit better ride than uh, what the original equipment offered. But um, I think that's true with anything you buy. I mean, I, I have never bought a car that I haven't modified to do what I wanted to do. And the bike was yeah. no different. It had, I wanted it to perform a certain way. You know, uh, we talked earlier and I was telling you, I have uh, 12 volt motorcycle lights on the bike so that I can be seen at night. Cause I do tend to ride a lot coming home from work at nine, 10 o'clock at night. And I want traffic to see me. I don't want to get run over by somebody. So I wired in a 12 volt battery with, um, 12 volt off-road lights. So I'm can be seen a half a mile away. People know <laughs> I'm coming and, and I don't tend to have too much of a problem with traffic as a result. When I had just the little basic bike lights, I, I did have problems with people. I, I think couldn't see me and they get right up on me before they would see me. And now I don't have that issue. Mm. So but again, I also don't spend a lot of time on the streets. I, I use LA riverbed, the Rio Honda riverbed, the San Gabriel riverbeds, um, to ride, to ride to and from work or in leisurely riding just to stay out of traffic. And so mileage wise, is that it's less miles to, to take the riverbed routes or you just do it? It's actually, you... it's actually more. Uh, so if I take a car, it's 22.2 miles to get to work. If I take the, the riverbed, it's 24.9 miles. Mm. Um, the reason being that the freeway that cuts across LA, the five, the five freeway that I take to get to work goes uh, northwest. So you're, you're at, you're driving at an angle, but when mm. I take the riverbeds, I'm going dead North and then I have to turn and go dead West. So I actually add almost three miles to the commute on the bike. Um, but the riverbeds have no stoplights. They have no traffic, uh, some pedestrian traffic and other bikers, but really not enough to, to cause a problem. It's a dedicated bike path. Um, uh, and I can get on it and shoot up that bike path in 20 minutes covering 10, 10, 12 miles. Uh, where on in a car that same 10, 12 miles would take me an hour mm. on the five freeway. Mm. Yeah, no, that seems like uh, quite the advantage. Plus, I feel like having the extra little bit of distance serves your cause, right? You're, you're getting yeah. a little bit more time on the bike. Um, well, you're getting more miles on the bike, but like you'd mentioned, you're actually doing it quicker than you would. Yeah, I'm doing it faster than I would on a car. The average speed in a car is about 14, 15 miles an hour. The average speed on my bike is about 22 um, over that same distance. So I'm doing it faster, but I'm, I'm working it. Um, I'm now at the point where I, I use, um, pass one or pass zero, um, and pedal the bike itself, as opposed to using pass four or five, where the bike is doing a percentage of the work. Uh, so I've gotten the stamina now that I don't need, um, to use the pedal assist all the time. There are times where I, I will use PAS 5, especially like late at night. I want to move as fast as I can to get home because I just don't want to be out in the dark. And plus, I got to be back at work in eight hours. So, you know, <laughs> 30 miles an hour is faster than 22. I get home in, yeah. you know, 30 minutes instead of instead of an hour. But it's um, very rare that I use the higher end uh, pedal assist anymore. Um, zero, obviously, as you can guess, is all human powered. Uh, if I can maintain uh, 20 miles an hour at zero, I'm good. And I, I just recently, this past weekend, rode a friend's acoustic bike, a uh, road bike, carbon fiber bike. And I was amazed that I actually covered 22 miles in 61 minutes. So I was averaging 22 miles an hour on a non-electric bike, which a year ago, I wouldn't have even been able to probably go 10 miles mm. uh, without dying. Um, maybe even five, to be honest with you, <laughs> at 365 pounds, that would have been a lot, of, a lot of weight I was pushing. Today, I'm 194 pounds. So big difference. Uh, a year has made. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And that, that was one of the main reasons that, you know, we wanted to reach out to you because like I said, this segment's called Amazing Stories. And just on the surface, it seemed like it was pretty amazing, just like the before pictures, the after pictures. Um, so it was, it was very interesting for us. We're like, what is going on here? What was the, you know, what was the uh, the driving force behind that? Obviously, yeah. you know, having the e-bike is nice and that's a, a piece of the puzzle. Um, but as you alluded to kind of in the beginning, there's a lot more going on. You know, there's the diet, there's the the mind shift that you have to make there. Um, and so it is cool that you yeah. know, the, the Cyrus e-bike was able to help you with that. Uh, but it's definitely not, you know, the hero of the story. No, it, it's, but I would say that it, it, it does cover uh, a good percentage of um, my travels because without the, without the side rusher bike, I would still be driving my car. Um, mm. You know, I would still be, I would still be fighting to find time to, to exercise and work out. And you can only do so much. I mean, I do go to the gym now three days a week and I, I do weight lift and, and resistance training as well, but there's only so much you can do in the time that you have. And I basically offset three and a half hours a day of car commuting, but three and a half hours a day of exercise. Mm. And it's, that plays a big part. Yes, the gastric sleeve surgery did help me lose weight. And yes, the diet and, and the nutrition uh, specialist helped me lose weight. And yes, the mindset helps you keep me focused on it. But it, in order for me to continue, I had to find a way to, to put activity into my life. Mm. And this is what did it. Um, because now I can't use the excuse. I don't have time to exercise because <laughs> four days a week, four days a week, I'm commuting to work 50 miles round trip. Um, and then on Saturdays and Sundays, uh, my, I got my daughter, uh, an electric bike for Christmas last year. And my daughter started going with me, with me on Saturday and Sunday rides. And we would do 30 or 40 miles, um, just go out and ride. And it helped her. She's, she's a teenager because with COVID, she couldn't get her driver's license because of the whole lockdown and stuff. Um, and I think it kind of helped her. She was locked up in the house for a year yeah. with schooling and all that. And I think it was nice for her to, to just kind of get out and ride and, and have some peace and quiet and get away from everything. My wife got interested in it after, I think it was about February or March. She wanted a bike, but she decided we were talking and she decided that for her, she didn't want her own bike. She wanted a tandem mm. so that she didn't have to be responsible for steering and ba battery maintenance and charging and, and <laughs> all of that. She just wanted to get on and pedal. So, uh, I ended up finding a, an electric tandem online, um, was not happy with it. Horrible, horrible company to deal with <laughs> that I got the bike from and I, I bought it, but I ended up tearing the entire thing down and rebuilding it, uh, so that it, from scratch. I mean, I, I, I spent $3,000 on the bike, probably put another 2000 into it mm. because it did not perform. It was nothing like my side rusher, my side rusher out of the box. I used it this bike. It took me two months to get it functional so that my wife and I can actually utilize it. Um, it was just a, a horrible ex buying experience with that company, but I, I just decided I wanted to keep it. So now we do, I do the tandem on the weekends and, and years, like I said, 36, uh, from from my house to the beach and back is 36 miles round trip. And that's what we do. We usually go from the house to the beach, have a picnic and then come back home. And we do that mm. every Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and we get a lot of comments. A lot of comp a lot of people want to talk to us about the tandem and they want to know, you know, how much it costs and how to build it and whatever, because it's uh, it's unique. You don't see too many electric tandems out there and you don't see too many tandems in general. Yeah. Um, and so, but again, it, it, the bike, the biking part of it, is, is a good percentage of why I've lost the weight. Uh, even the weight loss clinic in the surgery, the doctors told me that their, their goal weight for me was 260 pounds. That wow. was what they said. Um, from 430 down to 260 was about, they said about where I would end up if I did absolutely no exercise and did absolutely nothing else except the gastric sleeve surgery, I would end up around 260. I'm down to 194 and I'm still losing. I mean, I, four days ago, I was 198. Um, so, you know, it fluctuates four or five pounds a day, but it's normal for the human body. Um, it's, I'm still, I, I, my goal was 200 or less um, and a size 40 or less. I'm 194 and a size 36. So I set a new goal. My goal now is 180 at a size 34. So, <laughs> um, you know, and I know from my past life that I will get back up around 200 pounds, but it's going to be muscle. It's not going to be fat. Um, with weightlifting and weight training, you know, in, in the nineties, early two thousands, I was 200, 210 pounds, but I was 
uh, 12% body fat, not 30% body fat. Yeah. So big difference. And I, and I plan on getting back there. Yeah, no, that is sweet. And as far as we were talking a little bit earlier and you shared some stories, um, on your side rusher, some specific stories, is there any story, um, you on the side rusher that you think is, is fun, entertaining, unique, something that, uh, you know, you think about quite a bit any unique experiences you've had on it? Um, I get, I get asked a lot of questions. Uh, like I said, I've gotten pulled over several times. Um, I think the officers that were pulling me over weren't pulling me over so much be, because I was, I was speeding or, or didn't have signals. They wanted to know how I was speeding. <laughs> uh, they wanted to know how I was doing 30 miles an hour, you know, and keeping pace with the traffic around them or how the heck I was going. I mean, in one case I was going downhill, I was doing 42 and I passed the officer. <laughs> uh, and I think that's why they wanted to know. And I, I've gotten a lot of questions from people. Um, when I stop at lights, cars will honk at me and start asking me questions, uh, about the bike, you know, uh, where I got it, how much it costs. Um, I had one guy at a stop sign. I think I talked to him for 10 minutes. He wanted to know everything about the bike. He was, he was just very interested in, in, cause he had been following me for a, a distance and couldn't believe how fast I was moving. Uh, and then I was actually pedaling, uh, as opposed to just, just scooting around on the throttle, which I I've never done. Uh, I just don't use the throttle for that purpose. Um, the only time I ever throttle is when I'm starting off at, at a red light when mm -hmm. I'm around cars because I can get up the speed faster. But once I'm moving, I go back to pedaling. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I lay a lay off the throttle. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, a, I get a lot of comments, a lot of questions, a lot of people, I would say at least three or four times a week. Um, mothers, especially, um, I have noticed, uh, because of the, uh, lighting I have on the bike and my helmet, uh, I have a Lumos, uh, matrix helmet that mm. lights up has LEDs on the back. And I've had a lot of mothers ask me about that at, at, at lights where I got the helmet. Cause they can see me a half mile away and they want to know where I can get that for their kid. Yeah. You know? Um, so, I mean, the only real interesting stories, I, like I said, I've had, uh, I've had two incidences, two crashes on my, on my, uh, my side rusher, both were self-inflicted. Um, one of them was just going down a, uh, exiting the riverbed, going down a, a slope. And there was mud at the bottom of the slope because of a rain a couple of days and the bike just stuck in the mud. And I went head over handlebars <laughs> and landed in the mud. And it was, I mean, it was just a very comical thing. I didn't get hurt. Bike didn't get hurt. It just went down and stuck in the mud and I kept moving and the bike just stuck in the mud. <laughs> um, you know, the other incident was just, uh, riding on the riverbed. I got caught up in some of the algae and slime on the riverbed and went sliding. Um, no damage to the bike, no damage to me, just bruised ego, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, nothing really stands out other than the, the you know, amount of people that ask about it. Um, I've never really had negative experience on it. Um, I've never had people get upset with me because I go pedaling past them faster and they're on their acoustic bikes. I actually, I actually did have one guy on a uh, acoustic road bike that drafted me for almost seven miles. And I was doing 25, 26 miles an hour. And the guy was right on my butt. He was drafting me. And at the end of the, he, when he turned off, he stopped and thanked me. He said that, that because I was moving so fast, it may motivated him to keep up. With me. <laughs> um, so, but he was right. I mean, he was right behind me. And, and with the electric, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, stressing. I he was pushing hard and he was just drafting me. Okay. So, yeah, that's kind of cool that that's been your experience. It's been mostly positive. A lot of people have been motivating you. I mean, I'm not exactly sure why, but that story when you were telling me when the first day you rode there and everybody was standing out there, I got a little emotional. Um, I don't cry about, you know, stuff all the time, but it was just really cool to I picture that, you know, you're coming up here, you're starting this journey, and you've got everybody that you, you know, work with, you know, cheering you on. I thought that was really yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I said, the company has been outstanding when it comes to this. Uh, everybody is always con uh, complimenting me, congratulating me. I mean, the, the comment I heard most often, often from three of the, the ladies that work here is, "Oh, you look so thin today." Um, <laughs> You know, it's just, they knew, they knew me at my, at my largest weight. They knew me when I was barely able to walk. I had, I had a blood clot in my leg at one point. I had torn my meniscus in my knee. I could barely walk. I was limping. I was hobbling. Um, you know, even the CEO of the company has told me that he was watching me up and down a ladder, um, doing some work. And he couldn't believe that a year ago, I was the same guy when I couldn't even go up a step stool without losing my balance. 
Man. Uh, and now I'm bouncing around. I'm climbing up in the attic. I'm, I'm, I'm climbing up and down ladders and fixing things and, and on the floor and running cable, uh, you know, underneath the, the desks and stuff. And it's just not even the same guy that yeah. I was a year ago. Um, and like you've seen the before and after pictures, a lot of people have seen them and they, I don't even look like the same person. I even had to go get a new <laughs> driver's license ID because, uh, the last time I was pulled over, the officer told me, I don't look like my picture. I really need to go get a new picture because, wow. um, I don't look like the same person. <laughs> so that is cool. So where do you, so you've made a lot of progress and you talked about some of the goals you'd set for yourself, you know, on the physical side of things, where do you see yourself in, you know, six months to a year, you're still, you're still biking to work. What does that, what does that look like for you? Well, I don't, the biking to work is probably never going to stop uh, unless it's raining. Um, uh, this is a commitment I've made to myself that I, as long as I'm able to do it, I'm going to do it. Um, I've even, I have, I've worked at times, I've worked two or three jobs. Like I, I discussed with you earlier, I teach preschool and kindergarten in the mornings uh, from eight to 10, eight to 11. And then I come to my regular job uh, until eight, nine o'clock at night. Um, and as long as they're within reasonable distance, um, I'm going to bike. Uh, for me, reasonable distance is 30 miles, 35 miles, because that's what I can get out of my battery. So um, I, I honestly have looked into acoustic bikes now that I know that I can actually maintain a similar speed. Um, I don't know if I'll ever actually go 100% acoustic. Uh, and the only reason I say that is because I like the ability of, to be able to crank up the, the pedal assist and get going 30, 40 miles an hour. I've been riding motorcycles for 35 years and I like the idea of speed as opposed to <laughs> uh, practicality sometimes. It's yeah. not all the time, but um, so this is something I'll be doing as long as I can do it. Um, I, I mean, I could have stopped by now. I've, I met my goal weight and I'm at my, at my goal size. I could have stopped riding my bike. I, I choose to continue this. Um, aside from the fact that gas is $5 a gallon now, um, <laughs> and I went from spending $350 a month in gas to spend, I think I spent 60 bucks last month for gas. Um, and that was for my wife's car, not even mine. Uh, I just, you know, it, it's the, it's the, the idea that I, I, I couldn't find time to exercise in, and I have a sedentary job and now I've figured it out. I mean, it, yeah, took a little to figure it out, but if I commute, if I bike to bicycle commute to work, that's my exercise. That's three hours a day. Um, I, I can't use that excuse that I, I don't have, I don't get exercise anymore. Um, so it's six months to a year. I don't see it being any different than it is now. Um, never in my life would I have imagined putting 13,000 miles on a bicycle in a year. Um, but that's it. And then that's my average. I, I, if I did it five days a week, I'd, I'd be up to probably close to 20,000 miles for the year. Mm. Um, I, I don't, um, what I typically do is I, I drive in on Mondays. Uh, I bring all of my lunch food for the week. I bring all my clothes for the week. This way I can just take home what I need each night instead of carrying 40 pounds of weight on the bike every day. Uh, cause I, I've got to change clothes when I get to work. I'm not going to wear sweaty clothes that I, I just rode my bike all day at work. Uh, I'm not going to carry my lunch. I'm not going to carry my laptop if I could avoid it on the bike every day. So I just bring everything in on Monday. And then every day I take a little bit at a little bit of it home, uh, every night so that I don't have all that weight. Um, and you know, I, I can, I can focus on my ride. And yeah. then, like I said, I do Saturdays and Sundays. It's every weekend I get up. I get the family up at six o'clock we're out by eight o'clock home by noon. Uh, and we just, that's our, our Saturday, Sunday morning is go out and, and do the, do the bike rides, do the exercise. Yeah. Um, my daughter's going off to college soon. So, you know, I don't know if I have a writing partner. We'll have to figure that one out, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't see any change, honestly. Um, I, it's it's now not just maintenance of maintaining the weight that I'm at, but getting stronger, losing the losing the uh, the flab, uh, toning up, getting my core a little stronger. Um, you know, that's that's where my goal, my focus is right now. Um, it's been 18 months since I started this journey, and it has I haven't changed my diet since I started this. I haven't changed my my habits, um, the good habits in the diet that I've created, and and I don't want to change that. Yeah, I want to keep it where I'm at. I, you know, I've, I finally elim eliminated the bad eating and the bad eating habits, and I, I need to keep it going. You yeah. know, I, I, 
I honestly, I don't know what the doctors have to say, but I can tell you that I feel like I've added a good 10 years to my life. Um, <laughs> my, my grandfather was, died at age 54 at almost 400 pounds. Um, I have my first cousin, it's my dad's brother's kid, he is 400 pounds. He's di- type, type 2 diabetic. Um, he's already had two heart attacks. He's 53 years old. Mm. Uh, I'm 50. I don't want that. My dad... My dad never gained a lot of weight. He, I think the most he ever weighed in his life was 150 pounds. He just, he had a very fast metabolism and he was a vegetarian. So he didn't ever gain a lot of weight, but everybody else in the family did. And I seem to have inherited those genes. So I was on my way to being no different than my un- my grandfather or my cousin or my uncle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it took, honestly, it took me going to the hospital with blood clot to figure it out. Yeah. And, and it's sad that it took that much, but sometimes you just get so busy living life that you don't pay attention to what's actually happening to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my hope is that, you know, with, with this interview, you know, maybe that can inspire other people to, you know, get out there and change some of those habits and at least, at least evaluate where they're at. Like you said, like you were so busy living, it was hard to see where you were at. So maybe this is a good point for somebody who's watching this to say like, Hey, let me evaluate my life and see where I'm going and, you know, plan that out. You know, that trajectory of my life where I'm currently going, is that where I want to end up? And if not, you know, what can you do to change that? And, you know, obviously in your case, um, you know, with those comparisons, and you're looking at three or four years left, right? And it's like, you know, 53, yeah. 54, that's, you know, that's half of your life basically yep. gone, you know? Um, yeah. And and I'll tell you, for those that are out there, the reason I think the e-bikes are good for this, uh, especially for guys like me who are so heavy, aside from the fact that they support more weight than a standard acoustic bike. Most acoustic bikes have a 220 to 250 pound max capacity. Um, the, the the fat tire electric bikes have closer to a 400 pound capacity, depending on the make and model. Um, it's, it's much easier to get motivated on the electric bike because you start out and the bike is assisting you. I mean, you're literally, it's literally doubling your output. So you don't feel like, like you're, you're doing a lot of work and, and you're killing it. And I think that's what kills a lot of people, especially with, with biking or, or any kind of exercise. It's so difficult when you start that you give up hmm. very easily. When you can start gradual and easier and then make it harder as you move, as you, as you get build the endurance and as you move forward, you make it more difficult. It, it doesn't actually become more difficult. For me today, you know, I, I, a year ago, um, uh, Pedal Assist 5 was what I had to use. It was the only way that I was going to get to work in the reasonable amount of time that I set for myself and not feel like I was, I was completely wiped out. Now I'm using Pedal Assist 0 or 1 going the same distance, and it doesn't feel any different than it did a year ago using Pedal Assist 5. In other words, I'm maintaining the same amount of speed, but I, the bike is doing less of the work. I'm doing more of the work. Um, and it was a gradual thing over a year, but it kept me motivated. If, if I was trying to do that today, starting from zero, I don't know that I'd be able to maintain it for a year. I don't know that I would have put 13,000 miles on a bike in a year because it would have just been too difficult and I would have given up. And I think that's what happens with a lot of people with diet and exercise is you, you start off with good intentions, but you, you can't build up to it. It becomes so difficult from the beginning. It gets frustrating. So, uh, I mean, that to me is why the e-bike worked out well for me. I mean, I may, again, I may go to an acoustic at some point, but I, I like speed. So, I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. a good thing for me. Like I said, I've ridden motorcycles for years and, and I just like the, the two-wheeler behavior. Um, some people call it cheating. And the only thing I can say to that is, who am I cheating? I'm still pedaling. <laughs> I'm still working. I've still lost 236 pounds. So who exactly am I cheating by having a battery on my bike? Yeah. The only person I'm cheating is myself, but I don't feel like I've cheated myself because I still accomplished my goals. Um, I'm not in a race. I'm not competing with somebody else. I can understand if, you know, if I was in a triathlon or something with a battery, yeah, that's cheating, (laughs) but I'm not doing that. So, you know, it's, it is what it is. Uh, People are going to do what they're going to do. I I think that Cy Rusher in general is a great product. Uh, I think their bikes are, I, I actually did win uh, an XF650 in a raffle a couple of months ago uh, on Facebook. Um, so I had two of them to compare and I think both are were great products. Um, 
growing company, not without its issues, but I think if you give them a chance that uh, you'll find that the company in general uh, stands behind their product. I've not had any major issues that were not addressed. Uh, as I, I mentioned to you earlier, I did have a battery issue uh, when I got my bike and it, it did take some time to get a new battery, but they, you know, and they wanted videos and they wanted proof of what was happening. And I get that, you know, they want to make sure that people aren't trying to, to just get a second battery out of them and, and that things aren't, you know, actually not working the way they're supposed to be working. And after two months, I finally did get a replacement battery, but you know, it's a gamble. You're buying something online, sight unseen, and you either have to take the, the leap of faith or you don't. Um, I, I can't say good enough stuff about uh, Harry and Nestor. They've been, at this point, very good to me. Um, with what I've had to to deal with. I mean, that, there had been some parts that have broken um, on my bike and they've been replaced. It just takes it just takes some patience and time. I know it's frustrating for some people, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, absolutely. It's not a it's not a car. Let me tell you, it's not <laughs> like it's not. I, I know some people expect it to be the warranty. Like you have something break in your car, you take it to a dealership and they fix it, and they don't they don't hassle you about the warranty. It's not a car. It's a bike. You know, it's it's no different than buying a TV at Best Buy. TV doesn't work. You take it in to get fixed. They have it for three weeks to fix it. That's just the way I look at it. And some people want instant gratification and instant repair. You know, I, I understand that there's more involved in it than that. And of course, I work in, in the industry that I work in. Um, I deal with it every day. You yeah. know, we, we have, we, we, you, you have to, you have to understand how the process works and have yeah. the patience with it. And I think, you know, I think that's a good point is there's probably a lot of people that don't understand the process and the e-bike industry is, you know, as a good example, looking at that, there's a lot of people that don't understand what they're buying or what you know who's making these parts and putting them together and the final person that you're buying from sometimes you know they are just buying eight nine different parts from other people putting this little piece together slapping some logos on it and they're selling it to you oh yeah they're, 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 most of e-bikes from from the research i've done there's only a few major manufacturers of the e-bikes and they're all rebranded you know so you've got Cy Rusher is rebranded from another brand it was rebranded from another brand there's a couple of different manufacturers in China that are making all the same frames, all the same uh, electronic components. Uh, and you're pick apart, basically. You pick some parts off a shelf, slap them together, call it your brand. Um, you know, as long as you have the Q&A and the R&D behind it to make sure that mm. the parts work together, mesh together, and that the bike is functional, which I think Cy Rusher has done a good job with for the most part, um, you don't have problems, but you're always going to run into issues. And, and I don't care if you're in, a, in the automobile industry, the motorcycle industry, bike industry, there are always going to be lemons. There's always going to be that one bike that for whatever reason just isn't going to mesh and isn't going to work, but there's going to be a thousand that do, yeah. you know, and it sucks when you're the guy that gets the one bike, as long as the company's willing to back their product, there shouldn't be an issue. You know, it's when the companies don't back their product, that it, it, it becomes a problem for the consumer. Um, one of the sad things about social media in general for me is that you only see the negative. Yeah. You rarely see people that have good experiences. Um, that's one of the reasons I stayed on the Facebook owner group with uh, Cy Rusher was I had a negative experience and I'll be the first to admit I was, I was posting, I was angry about my battery issue and I was angry about another issue I had with the bike. It was resolved. It took time. And, you know, I think, you know, I want to make sure that people understand that yes, it does take time, but but Cy Rusher does stand behind their product. And I didn't want other customers to experience the frustration that I did. So I try and stay positive. I stay on the on the group and say, hey, you know, if you have a problem and and you're not getting a response from Cy Rusher, this is what I did to fix the problem. I'm gonna I, I'm here to help you. I, I don't get anything from Cy Rusher for it. I've never gotten anything from them. I post in the owners group to help people, not to get benefits or or uh, freebies from a company. And it, Cy Rusher is not the only group I do it for. Um, I do it for the group, uh, for the vehicle that I own, for the motorcycle I own. Um, I haven't owned a Chrysler vehicle in, well, since 2010. So what are we talking, 11 years now? But I'm still a member of the Mopar forums and still help people um, with their Chrysler vehicles because I know a lot about the cars. I used to tune the cars. I, I have the uh, the dealer tuning tools. Um, you know, I used to have a host... Ho 
tech days in my driveway for guys with modern Mopars come over to my house. We do oil changes and brakes and, and uh, upgrades and modifications and suspension in my driveway because I'm a mechanic. That's, you know, <laughs> I, I, I have a mechanical background and I still do that stuff. And it's, I don't do it for money. I don't do it for, I do it because I like doing it. I like helping people. I like making sure that, that people are satisfied with what they've got in, that's what I, that's just me. Like I said, I teach preschool. You know? <laughs> I teach I teach computers to three year olds, computer yeah. class to three year olds, and that's not my job. That is, I do that as a volunteer. I, I don't get paid for that. It's a hundred percent volunteer thing that I do two hours, three days a week. So, yeah. anything I can I can do to help people out. Yeah, that's awesome. That's just, uh, yeah. I wish more people had that attitude and approach to life. You know. Like, let's, let's see what, what can I offer to these people to make their lives better? I think we don't see, you know, maybe enough of that. And there's definitely a lot of people I, out there doing it, but I, you know, I'd like to see more. That'd be, that'd be awesome. I, I, th I always tell people I have a blessed life. So I try to give back where yeah. I can. I'm not, I'm not rich. I'm not famous. I don't want to be rich. I don't want to be famous. I'm comfortable. We want for nothing. And I need to give back because things have always been good for me. Yeah. I've always managed, you know, I've always managed to get by. It's not without hard work. There are times in my life where I've worked three jobs, 20 hours a day, um, you know, but it always balances out. I always manage. It, it, things always manage to come out positive for me. So I try and give back positively where I can. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's very cool. So if there was somebody, and this is going to be my final question, because we've taken up a lot of your time and I really appreciate it. Um, the final question I have here is if there's somebody who is interested in getting an e-bike and they're like, hey, I think this is kind of the move for me. This makes sense, you know, for my life. It fits my budget, you know, kind of ticks all those boxes for them. What is one piece of advice that you would give to somebody, whether it's um, a mindset or certain parts to look at, maybe things that they could upgrade, um, things that you've used in your, you know, commute every day um, that have made it better? Well, you got to tell you the first thing that anybody does when they go looking for something like this is they need to they need to really sit down and and figure out what it is they want and what they're going to use it for. Mm, yeah, I had a very I had a very tunneled mindset. I'm going to use this for commuting back and forth to work. So I needed a bike that was going to handle that. So for me, full suspension was a necessity because I'm going to be riding on crappy Los Angeles pothole filled roads. I needed <laughs> suspension. Um, I needed something that was higher in the wattage power wise because of my, my size at the time. I, I wanted to make sure it could handle my weight, but also had enough power to get me to where I wanted to go in the time frame that I wanted to get there. Um, you know, I'd set myself an hour and a half commute each way. So I didn't want, you know, a 300, 300 watt bike would not have gotten me to and from work in an hour and a half. It just, it's just not feasible. Um, so you have to figure out what it is you want from the bike first. You know, I, lot, I know a lot of people impulse buy and they're like, oh, this looks cool. I'm going to buy this. It's $3,000. We're done. But then they get it and they're disappointed. You get the buyer's remorse and the buyer's regret because it's not doing what you want it to do. Um, so those were the couple of things that you need to look at first. What is it that I want this bike to accomplish? What am I going to accomplish with the bike? Then look. And then for me, I had to do some upgrades. Um, to mine and it was because I wanted it to perform a certain way. Uh, one of the upgrades, the, one of the first upgrades I did was a larger front chain ring. Um, the XF800 is a mountain bike, comes with a small chain ring because it's designed for hill climbing. I don't have any hills that I'm climbing to and from work. I have a, a small two and a half mile stretch. It's a 9% grade, which isn't a very large grade. It's just a very long grade. Um, so I need something with more speed. So more, more teeth on the chain ring equals more speed. You can either, get a bigger chain ring, or you can uh, change out the rear cassette for uh, smaller gearing so that you can actually have a uh, higher speed, taller gear equals higher speed. That's just the way it works. Um, and that was my focus. I wanted an average of 25 miles per hour with the original 42 tooth chain ring. That wasn't possible. I rode that for about two weeks and, and I could never get the bike above 20, um, put the 53 tooth on. And now the bike averages about 27. Um, and that's in, you know, seventh gear pedal assist one. Um, so that was for one of the, one of the first upgrades I had to do was to just get the bike to perform the way I wanted to. The second upgrade for me was lighting. Like I said, I ride at night. Um, the, the little light that came on the bike just wasn't enough. I needed a tail light. I needed turn signals. 
Um, I needed side lighting. Um, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm riding through East LA, Monterey Park, Montebello uh, areas of Los Angeles, which are very heavily trafficked areas uh, with very narrow streets. And uh, for the six or seven miles that I'm on those streets, I want to be seen. I don't want to be run over. Some of them have bike lanes, which is great. Most of them don't. So I'm in traffic. Um, so, you know, I had to go do some research. The, I did not want to limit the capacity of the battery's bike by putting a lot of lights on it. So I went and got a second battery pack, a um, little 12 volt, uh, eight amp hour uh, battery pack that I strapped to the uh, rear rack. And then I wired in 12 volt off-road lights for Jeep from a Jeep. They're seven inch LED bars. So, I mean, I, I can be seen. I'm blind people sometimes and it annoys the drivers, but you know what? Too bad. Yeah. You're going to see me. <laughs> um, so, and, and on the bike trails on the, on the riverbeds, there's no lights. It's pitch black. Mm. So that's another thing. A, a lot of people, a lot of pedestrians on the bike trails and you can't see them until you're on top of them with the simple lights that come on the bike. I needed something that would give me enough light in front of me that I wasn't going to be running over a pedestrian or their dog or whoever <laughs> else happens to be on the trail. Right. Uh, and around here, horses, believe it or not, um, ride those, the, the Rio Hondo and Los Angeles riverbeds. There's a lot of horses on those trails. There's a lot of horse um, ranches or, or stall stables uh, that parallel those, those trails. So the few times I've scared the hell out of myself coming around a corner and pitch black and there's a horse in front of me. <laughs> so. That is funny. So for you, it was, it was upgrading the, you said the front fork, the lights, the front, the, the front chain ring, the, uh, the, the, the chain crank ring. set in the chain ring. Yeah. The, the crank set in the chain ring and the lights are the two, for me, those were the most important upgrades. Uh, oh, and you know what? And the rear shock, I uh, needed something with an air shock that had a little bit more dampening in it than the original shock that came on the bike. Um, you know, it, it's, it's like I said earlier, I, I buy a car, I modify a car. People buy a car. They, you know, they put rims on a car. They put, um, you know, stereo systems in cars, they modify cars. The bike to me is no different. You need to modify it to work for you. And you need to know, you need to know going into it, what it is you want, and then you need to modify it to work for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's nothing out of the box is going to work hundred percent for everybody hundred percent of the time. So, you know, I know people get frustrated. Well, I bought this bike and it's not doing what I want it to do. Well, go spend 30 bucks and make it do what you want it to do. Chain, <laughs> ring, chain rings are, are cheap. I mean, I got the, the rings $75 for the ring that I bought. You know, the headlights cost me less than $200 for everything. To me, that's not a lot of money for my own peace of mind and safety and to make sure the bike's doing what I want it to do. And like I said, 13,000 miles on the bike. Um, I have gone through nine sets of brake pads, three sets of tires, um, four chains. I think I'm on my fourth chain now um, in that 13,000 miles. This is wear and tear. It's no different than brakes on a, on a car. It's no different than, you know, a fan belt on a car. Uh, it's, it's wear and tear. It's part of, it's part of the ownership. Yeah. If you're doing 300 miles in a year, that stuff's going to last 10 years. You're doing 13,000 miles in a year. That stuff's only going to last <laughs> a couple months. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, it, it's just, it, it is what it is. I, I don't know how else to say it. You know, the, the, maintenance is just part of the, it's just part of the expense, but I can tell you that even with all that I've spent on the bike in the last year, uh, the purchase price and on the, and all of the uh, replacement parts and the, the, the accessories that I've added, I still have come several thousand dollars under what I would have spent for maintenance on a car. Yeah. So, you know, and, and the cost of gas, I mean, that, that alone, I, I saved over $3,000 this year in gas alone. So for me, that, that, it balances out, yeah. you know, it's one expense going from one place to another, but it is, you know, like I said, it is what it is. Uh, you know, I've, I've got three e-bikes now. My daughter's got hers. I've got mine and we've got the tandem and uh, it's our lifestyle. It's, it's what we do now. We use them as much as possible, as often as possible. The only time we use the car is when we really don't have a choice. Uh, when I've got a toot, tote uh my daughter and and several of her classmates to to uh school events or we've got to pack up the back of the, the truck with uh you know groceries or whatever the case may be but other than that we use the bikes any place we any place we need to go and that has been amazing stories a side rusher tv podcast big shout out to mark for coming on and sharing his journey with us and we'll be back with a new episode very soon